let's talk about let's talk about the product itself. Okay. Let's like like so and, and I, again, this is where let's go through this kind of one step at a time. Yes. What is BioPro? It's a non-synthetic alternative to prescription horm- human growth hormone and peptide treatments. Right. So <laughs> that's the that is the ten second yes. you know, or five second thing. Okay. So a non-prescription, correct. Non-synthetic, yes. Alternative to prescription growth hormone and peptides. Uh, pe- and peptides. Yep. So the first thing we have to understand is okay. So with that, when you say it's non-synthetic, that means it's not created in a lab. It is a naturally occurring substance that we formulate into a product that your body can actually use. Cool. It's molecularly identical to what your body uses. And the way it's being delivered, right, is yes. interesting to people. Like, what is this little, it's the little brown yep. tube with the cap on it? Like, what, what's that about? So we are not big believers in pills, capsules, stuff like that. The digestive system is designed to break materials down. And it's not to say that you can't absorb things. There's words like liposomal and all these things that people put on products. And it's not that you can't absorb things through the lining of your stomach or your esophagus. It's just not the most ideal way to get something into your bloodstream. You want to avoid the digestive tract. Well, there's a few ways to do that. Right. Um, People now clearly are very familiar with the injection route. You inject things uh, what would be these types of products would be subcutaneously into the skin, mm-hmm. right? Or you, you know, peptides. inject them. Peptides, growth, growth hormone, hormone is injected sub Q. Mm-hmm. Um, different other hormone treatments are, they call it sub Q, sub- subcutaneously. Then you have uh, nasal sprays. Nasal sprays are great. Very similar to what we do, but uh, a little bit more direct. Um, and then you also have, uh, you know, some people's favorite, not mine, but um, you have suppository which is going into your rectum, Mm -hmm. right? So it can be absorbed directly because it's, here's the thing is, is that, but that same tissue in your rectum is very similar to the tissue within your mouth. Mm -hmm. So we use what's called a sublingual delivery system, which the product sits under your tongue, you shake it up just to make sure that's, you know, an even solution because it it does settle. There's raw material within that solution. So we shake it up, activate it, pour it under your tongue. It will express the blood vessels in your mouth, the same blood vessels that exist in your nasal passages and in your, you know, rectum mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So you can absorb as much as you possibly can directly into the bloodstream. There will be some liquid left over. You swallow whatever's left. Awesome. The reason why we do that is our entire brand is, is doesn't believe in, and we don't do injections. Nasal spray to keep this product clean and to keep it preserved and to make it effective. You could probably do that. I'm telling you not to. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you, I want to try that. You could do it. It would be excruciating. I mean, some people might be into that. People are into weird stuff, but it would be painful. And nasal sprays, I think, are cool. But you also have to use a lot of different materials for the packaging and different things like that that we don't necessarily want to use, Mm -hmm. okay? So that's a whole nother conversation. So we also don't make suppositories. I don't even know how to make those. I mean, we don't have the equipment. I don't even know what would go into that. I don't um, think you'd be selling seems, as much product if yeah, that's what and it was. It seems, it, seems like, <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of risk involved in something like that, right? Yep. So uh, sublingual is perfect. Sublingual yeah. is the best method that we can use that is, um, we can do a high rate of output of manufacturing. It stays stable for two years. It's, um, it's easily accessible. It doesn't get messed up that often. And uh, it works really well, all things considered. So talk to me a little bit about hormones, just like, what do you think people need to kind of understand about growth hormone sure. versus like sex hormones yep. and, and how this product interplays with the body in order yeah. to do things better? So one of the number one questions we always get all the time is like, Hey, is this like TRT or testosterone, whatever? Now testosterone is awesome. Okay. <laughs> testosterone is, is a dominant hormone in men. It's still prevalent in women, but the master hormone for both men and women is growth hormone. Okay, so we focus in the growth hormone space. Growth hormone is a master hormone for metabolic function, wound healing, uh, muscle development, muscle strength, muscle preservation, insulin resistance, how your body uses insulin, um, oxygen, even oxygen potency in the blood, which relates to sexual function, all that kind of stuff. Um, We're all focused on testosterone these days, especially as men, because that's heavily marketed. It's a cheap, you know, all things considered. It's very accessible. Very Very accessible, very cheap. We're in Florida. I promise you we can go out to the terrace right now and I we can probably, number one, spot three different TRT billboards mm-hmm. or hormone billboards. And two, we could probably hit with a rock 10 different clinics that are cash pay. You're going to have a Starbucks, a McDonald's, and a TRT clinic. That's Florida's, Florida's Florida. awesome about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so We're everybody knows about testosterone, which is awesome. But what a lesser known fact is, is that 
in order to absorb testosterone, whether it be natural or synthetic, you have to have adequate growth hormone, specifically its end result growth factors. And that's a settled science. That is not, you know, um, hearsay, right? The insulin growth, insulin like growth factor number one is necessary for the maximum absorption of testosterone. So if you're only looking at things from a testosterone perspective and you're not looking at things from a, a, an entire picture, you might not either be getting the effects of a synthetic treatment that you might be getting or your testosterone might be low, not necessarily because of the testosterone, but your body's ability to even absorb what you're creating. Right. So we focus on the growth factor in the growth hormone space, which, uh, I mean, growth hormone decreases. As soon as you finish puberty, growth hormone goes down. It's typically 1% to 2% per year. In extreme or rare cases, it could be up to 50% by 35. But that the mathematics is exactly why typically guys wake up 40, 41, 42, 43, 44 years old. They're like, oh, dude, I don't look like I used to. I don't feel like I used to. I don't have the energy. I don't have the sex. Well, you know, it's all of this hormonal decline, and that's the game that we play in. 